Hi, I'm Dr. Roland Tripp. Today we're going to talk about chew training. Now this is one of my favorite topics to talk about. In Hannah the Pet Society, we have a whole spectrum of dogs. Some of them love to chew, especially the Labradors and those dogs that are bred to have things in their mouth a lot. And we have at the other end of the spectrum dogs, you can't pay them to chew on things. Now unfortunately, the dogs who tend to not chew very well are the little dogs. Little dogs are more important for them to chew because they're the ones that have more dental problems. So the reason we're talking about training the dog to chew is that we want several goals. Number one, we want to clean the teeth less often because every time it requires an anesthesia which has risk associated with it and it's a big deal. Hospitalization, it's a stress for everybody. So we'll do that when we need to and in HANA that's included in your membership fee so that's cool. Now, we still don't want to put them through that stress, so let's try to have them chew on things from the time they're very, very young. If we can get the dog started off young chewing on things, when nature tells them to anyway because of the teething process, what we want to do is put emphasis into teaching them to chew even more, more than they would have otherwise. Now, what we want to do is develop a chew spectrum because some dogs are going to chew through things like crazy, others are not going to chew at all. So I'm going to show you some examples of what I mean by the chew spectrum. The first category we're going to divide into chew toys that we want you to chew up and destroy and other chew toys that we don't want you to chew up and destroy. Now for example, take this squeaky. This is a fun thing for the dog to can squeak and they can chase it and so on. But here's the problem. Some dogs will begin to destroy it. They'll chew it up and destroy it. So if you see that happening, you have to take it away. Similarly, plush type toys like this that are cute but the dog starts to rip the eyes or the ears off. As soon as you see that, you have to be there and stop that from happening. Stop destruction of plastic and fabric from the moment they start so they never develop that habit. So these are examples of interactive toys that they can play with but truly they're not chew toys in that sense. Now what we want to do is provide toys that they like to chew. For example, the greeny type or imitation greeny types. These have an odor that are attractive to the dog and so therefore very, very good to do for those dogs that don't like to chew. For those dogs that chew like crazy, they're probably a waste because they're expensive and they don't need to. They're, they're going to go farther up the spectrum. For dogs that don't chew very well, this pig's ear. Now this is a transition tool. We do not use this very often. It's for those dogs that don't like to chew. These are high in fat. They can cause medical problems if you use them too much, so they're only used to get them started. Dogs that don't chew anything else, chew a little bit on this and then we're going to want to take it away. I'm going to tell you how to take it away in a moment. Now moving up the spectrum, there are many chew toys like this that are designed to be dental in varying degrees of hardness. So this is harder. So we're, things like this we want to try them out, figure out what they want. Now as we go up the spectrum, now we're up to rawhides. Now let's take a moment and talk about rawhide shoes. First, there are some people that say never give a rawhide to a dog. Well that's because some dogs get into trouble because the dog was not educated on how to use rawhide appropriately. So what I'm saying is that when you introduce the rawhide you should be there at first until the dog knows how to chew it. A really good thing to do is have the dog with you and pet them and praise them while they chew on the rawhide. Say good dog, oh that's a good chew, good chew. Now we want the dog to chew in this case because now they're associating us and our praise and affection with chewing on this object. This is very useful for dogs who get lonely or have separation anxiety or separation issues. If they can associate you and your affection with an object like this and you can make it available for them, that's a way for them to release some energy and pressure. That's a good thing. Now, as we go up further, now the Kong. Now we're getting into toys that we want them to chew on, but it is almost indestructible. So here's what you do. You notice I put their kibble inside here. So I'm going to show you just on my hand. If this, if the, if this Kong toy is sitting like this, then the dog comes out, all they have to do is sniff it, they just bounce it once, a couple of pieces fall out. They able that. You can see they're in there, they knock it around, and here comes some more. So they're learning what's, it, what's in there is their food. For the dogs that aren't that quick with it, you can take uh, training rewards or cookies and initially put it in there and then later phase it out and move over to the kibbles. Now for smaller dogs, you can do the same thing because this they can get their mouth around. There's different structures. So what we're looking for is a hole that you can put the food in where they have to knock it around. So this one would be more advanced because it's harder to get the food out. But on this one, it just falls out automatically. 
What we really want is for the dog with all of these hard rubber toys, we want to have a positive association, whether it's kibble or some peanut butter put in there. They put their mouth on it a lot. We want them to chew on this. Now what I like about a toy like this and the Kong is they have some give to it. So you can, they, the dog can chew on it and they get purchase. Similarly, at moving up the scale to still harder things, things like this toy here, they can get some purchase in it and they can enjoy it, but it's just about indestructible. You can still put stuff, some peanut butter or cheese whiz, something like that inside there. So this is a pretty good toy. I like this a lot. Now, at the upper end of the spectrum, we started out with the really desirable things like pig ear or a greenie. Now we're at the other extreme. This is hard nylon. It takes a really dedicated chewer to want to chew on this. So the advantage of this is it lasts forever. So what we can do is we can put some peanut butter on this so they're licking at it and chewing at it. You can soak it in soup overnight at very low, the leftover soup after you turn it off, you can just soak it up, dry it off, and it's going to impregnate to some in there. Most importantly is if we see the dog chewing on it at all, praise the dog. Open your mouth. Good dog. Good chew. Put it in their mouth and praise them. Chewing is really a good thing. So, uh, we can, you, with Hannah, we provide the food in this kind of a format, so you can take the food out. And what I'm saying is, in initial stages, provide all of their food inside several Kongs. You can add some water and freeze it. You can get frozen Kongs, and you can leave that with them when they're gone, so that their chewing happens when you're gone, gives them something to do. So, let's review. Why do we care? Number one, we want them to chew to clean their teeth. Number two, it gives dogs, uh, I like to say, pasatempo. That is something to do. Just like we have things to do, like watch TV and so forth, we want them just to have something to do. Number three, it's an energy releaser. None of us have enough time to walk the dog and exercise the dog enough, so many dogs have exercise frustration and it results in behavior problems. If we can get them chewing on something, especially things that take a long time, that take time, now we've got something not only that to occupy their mind, but to release their energy. And lastly, if we can have it associated with us, now we have a way to sort of be there when we're not there. Similar to leaving your warm t-shirt in the kennel with them, you can also leave that chew toy that you've been praising and petting them when they use it. And hopefully then, when you're gone, they're thinking of you just like you're thinking of them. If you have more questions, come and visit us at hannasociety.com. Thank you.